welcome back, uh, Mr. Bergman. Today we're gonna take some of the stuff that you guys felt uncomfortable with last video where we didn't have numbers kind of matching up and we're gonna talk about balancing equations. Um, and to, to help you understand this, I'm, I'm gonna start off with um, when I first became a bachelor and uh, my, my grandma, as many of your grandmas probably are, was an amazing cook. And so she gave me recipes to work on on my own. And when I looked at her recipes, uh, they had put chicken in and put salt in and whatever else. And I would, I would call her up and I'd be like, well, how much? And she in typical grandma fa fashion would be like, just put enough in. Well, just put enough in is not very helpful to us. And similarly with equations, we want to make sure that we know amounts of things. If I were to tell you, Mr. Bergman, we need to put together a chocolate chip cookie like we used in the previous example. And I said, we need flour, eggs, sugar, chocolate chips, vanilla. And I didn't tell you any quantities, and you just randomly put amounts in. Wouldn't that be a pretty horrific yeah. cookie? Ten eggs, a cup of sugar. I mean, how much, right? <laughs> What's the right amount? I think the recipe I used two eggs, and then two cups of sugar, and four cups of flour, whatever, right? Or you know, you don't put a gallon of vanilla in, right? You just put a couple of <laughs> tablespoons, right? But I'm glad you brought up vanilla because if you've ever tasted vanilla, vanilla smells like heaven, but it attacks as if it's evil. <laughs> yeah, don't drink it right, direct. So in a balancing equation, we have to indicate the amount, the amounts of the things. And remember, we talk about how things are going to bother you. Uh, yeah. So, Mr. Dimitrich, what are the rules when we're balancing equations? So what's the rule? Well, number one? Oh, you see, you see them here in front of us here on the board here in the middle. And, and the biggest rule of all is this. We can never mess with subscripts when we're trying to balance things off. So we're going to use coefficients to tell how many of each thing. So if I put a three in front of my eggs, that's going to tell you I need three eggs, right? So in these cases right here, when we do an example, whenever we need to change to balance things off, we're gonna put coefficients in front of those elements. Now, as a back note, you haven't really explained what a coefficient is. What's a coefficient? So when we have a coefficient, so if I've got you know oxygen gas, the number in front is the coefficient. So if I have three oxygen gases, this is the coefficient right here, this number in the front. This is the number I'm allowed to change. I can't change the two, that's the subscript. Or if I've got, you know, PBOH4, some kind of you know, lead four hydroxide, I'm allowed to change only the number in the front. And that could be a one, a two, a three, it could be a 24. This is the number that you can change when you're balancing the equation, that's the coefficient. So rule number one is uh, no touchy, <laughs> the, the subscripts only the coefficients. What are the other rules? Well, if you take a look here, um, we, we typically want to start with things that only appear once on each side because that allows us to balance them off pretty easily. Good. The other thing that's kind of tricky and is really, really helpful is instead of breaking apart each polyatomic ion into individual atoms, we can treat them as whole units. So why don't we, why don't we try an example here? So here we have iron oxide, which is one from the last video, if you recall, and it breaks down into iron and oxygen, but it's Fe2O3 breaks into Fe plus O2. Now what I like to do, guys, is I like to put like a, a line under each of them. That's the coefficients. And now the only thing I'm allowed to change is, if you will, the red numbers. So, Mr. Demetrius, what am I going to do first here? So you can pick any element that you want to start with. I typically start with the more complex ones. So we're going to start with Fe203. And how many Fe's do we have there? Two. We have two. So we're going to put a two where? Right here. So now we have two Fe's and two. I don't, notice I didn't put a two down here. I can't do that, right? Okay, the only thing I do is the two in the front. Now what do I do? Well, you have three O's there, and here's where it gets a little bit tricky, because if you have three O's and you have two O's over there, you cannot just, like, subtly change the two outside of the O into a three. Well, I can just do this. Yeah, no, not so much, although that is fun. That's um, changing the coefficient. I'm allowed to, I can't change, or that's changing the subscript. I'm not allowed to do that. I have to leave this as a two. So how do so, I do this? So it kind of comes back to our common denominator idea. If I have three O's on one side and I have two O's on the other side, I can take two of the O3s and three of the O2s and balance them oh. off. So if I put a two here, that means there's two times three or six O's. To fix the O's on this side, I get three times two is six O's. But Mr. Beecher, that just screwed up my iron. I solved the iron problem, yeah. now it's all broken. And, and this, is one of the things, this is one of the things I want to encourage you guys as you do these. View these as kind of fun puzzles because when, it, when, you, when you change something uh, and you put different coefficients in, it may change something that you already balanced. You may have to go back and forth a little bit. So as Mr. Bergman is doing right here, there was a two there before because we thought we only had two FEs. But now if you take a look, if you see we have two times two, 
That's four FEs on the left-hand side, so we have to go back and rechange the four FEs. So, it's, it's, yeah, it's a puzzle, back and forth, like Sudoku or whatever, right? So you got to kind of do that one. All right, let's do some more. Um, by the way, just to be clear, uh, we always encourage you guys to double-check to make sure you have the correct number of each oh, yeah. one at the very end. Yeah, so, so as a point, the, maybe we haven't said this, guys, is that the key is to have the same number of irons on both sides the same number of oxygens, or whatever the elements are, because you can't like create or destroy matter. It's like the conservation of mass of the universe. You can't break, you can, all you can do is um, make the same elements on the other side, but they're gonna be rearranged and bonded to somebody else. So here's a reaction, Mr. Dmitrich, where I have sodium carbonate plus aluminum makes aluminum carbonate plus sodium. Now notice I've written this out correctly. It's important that you do this with the charges and all that stuff. So I need to, uh, how do I balance this? What am I gonna do? What well, do you think I should start for, with? You... Yeah, typically, typically what we like to do is start with the most complex uh, compound on there because that, sometimes other things will just fall into place. So I'd start with aluminum carbonate yeah, on that side. Yeah, it's got a two and a three, where this has just got a two and a one. Notice that this carbonate is in parentheses. It's not there, but we can kind of think in parentheses because one of the rules, if you recall, is if you have a polyatomic ion and the one that you have is carbonate, CO3, Think of it as one entity, not one C and three O's, but as one CO3, or in this case, three CO3. So how do I fix that? So if this is the most complex one, and I've got, I can either fix my aluminum or I can fix my carbonate. So let's fix the aluminum first, since it's first. So if I've got two aluminums here, what do I do? Well, you need two aluminums on the other side. Back so to this side, and I put a two here. By the way, by me doing this, I'm making an assumption that there's a one in front of this aluminum carbonate. Uh, we don't have to put a one if it's not there. It's like, you know, it, these are coefficients. Think of math class. You can say one X or you can just say X, right? For math class, it's the same thing. Now I've got some carbonate issues. How many carbonates are there here? Well, you have three carbonates on this side. And then on the yeah. other side, as you just showed, you have one unit of carbonate. So if you only have one on that side, you need to have three of them. So you're going to put a no. coefficient. Important. I'm not changing another coefficient. I'm not saying parentheses three because that changes what it is. I'm just adding numbers to the front. But that gives me how many sodiums? Well, now that gives you six sodiums. And so you have fix only that, one over there. I just put a six there. And let's double check. Can, how many sodiums yeah. here? Three six. times two is six on this side. Six times one is six. How many carbonates? Now remember, this three multiplies this whole thing by three. So there are three CO3s. We jump over here. How many CO3s do we have? Three. We have two ALs here. We have two ALs here. Start. We got it. So here's a reaction, Mr. Dimitrovich. This is a certain type of reaction, and there's a trick when we're trying to solve these types of problems. These are we're going to learn later called combustion reactions. They are the funnest ones. They blow things up. You get to set us on fire in class. It's super awesome with uh, reactions similar to this, but. Again, we can only change the coefficient. So when you have a combustion reaction, uh, again, we'll learn more about that in a, a video or two, is that there is what I like to call the Cho 2 rule. These are the hardest ones to balance, but if you do the Cho 2 rule, you can solve that. What that means is you, you balance the carbon first. If you have like C's and H's plus oxygen, they most of the time make CO2 and H2O. And that means you balance the carbon first and then the hydrogen, and then the oxygen, and if it doesn't work out, you double it. Cho2, make sense? So, let's do the carbons first. How many carbons on the left side of C4H10? You know, a four. Four, so I'm gonna fix that by putting a four next to the CO2. Now, it's Cho2, so what do I do next? Hydrogens, how many hydrogens on this side? You got 10. 10, so to fix that, the only, that, by the way, I, I put the four here in the C because there's only C's in the carbon dioxide. In the hydrogen, the only place to find hydrogen is in the water. So to make that 10, I put a five here. Now I have to do my oxygen. Now there's two oxygens on this side and there's quite a few on this side. We have to kind of like do some math here. Four CO2s means four times two. So there are eight oxygens in CO2. And how many in the water, in the five waters, Mr. Dimitrovich? You got five. Five, so eight and five is 13. So I've got 13 here, I have to put a number here. Uh-oh, what's the problem? Well, you I can't put 13 half, there. Yeah, yeah, that's half of an oxygen. So what do you, Cho, two. So what do we do? We double everything. So I'm gonna double the C4H10 to two. I'm gonna double the CO2 to eight. I'm gonna double the five waters to 10. Now let's, now, 
How many C's? Eight. C, two times four is eight. How many C's? Eight times one. How many H's? Two times 10 is 20. How many H's? 10 times two is 20. And now let's add up our O's on this side. How many O's here? Eight times two is 16 from the CO2. And then 10 times one is 10 from the water. 16 plus 10 is 26. What number goes in front of the O2 here? Now you gotta put a 13. It's 13, because 13 times 2 is 26. So it's 2, 13, 8, and 10. Um, those are the coefficients. So folks, that's how you balance equations. And there are lots of other sort of idiosyncrasies. You're going to get good at this by practicing. And we're going to give you plenty of time to practice. And one last thing. We're drawing them, and we're writing out the correct formulas. But there are going to be times where we give you the words, and then you write the words, and then you write the formulas, and then you balance it. And the mistake everybody seems to make is they'll write FeO or something like that instead of Fe2O3. Or they'll write out the wrong formula. Or like they'll not write O2, but they'll write O. So it's super important that you write out the formulas correctly. Hey, guys, that's all for this video. We'll see you in class. Indeed. See you next time.